So here we're going to evaluate given limits. So we first have a limit as x goes to 2 of 1 minus x squared plus e to the x. So whenever I do this, literally what I do is I always try to plug in 2 into my function here and uh, see if it works. Okay, so let's do that. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 2. And so I have 1 minus 2 squared plus e to the 2. So this becomes 1, or, uh, 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, and then e squared. And that's my answer right there. So if you can just plug it in, hey, you got it. Okay, so um, let's try another one. Limit as x approaches pi of the function sine x times cosine x. Well, if I literally take the same um, technique and I just plug in pi everywhere I see an x, what do I get? I get the sine of pi times the cosine of pi. Well, the sine of pi, if we think about the unit circle from your pre-cal days, pi goes over here. So um, what's that going to be? That is going to be um, negative 1 comma 0. So sine is 0 and cosine is negative 1. Okay. So since that's the case, when I multiply those two things together, I get 0. How about that? All right. Now, those are nice. And I put nice in quotation mark because it's like all we have to do is use our limit rules, our basic limit rules, and we literally plug in the number and boom, voila, there's our limit. We have the answer. But what about a scenario like this? Let's try plugging in 2 for x. What happens? Well, I get 2 squared minus 4, so that's 4 minus 4 is 0. And then 2 minus 2, that's 0. So I have 0 over 0. Uh-oh, this is an indeterminate form, okay? So just plugging in doesn't get our answer like we did in these first two problems. So not every limit problem is nice and easy and basic. So we need a way to figure out how to get our answer because the answer is not indeterminate. It's not 0 over 0. So let's see what we can do. Well, the technique we're going to use here if we get 0 over 0 is factoring. Factoring cancel. Why did you do all that factoring <laughs> through your whole math career? It's, uh, it's one way. Um, factoring is kind of like knowing how to uh, read and write in, um, in uh, English class, right? This factoring is probably one of the most important uh, techniques you learn in algebra and calculus is foundation is in algebra. So really um, probably can't make it any further in your math career without knowing how to factor. So it's a good thing I think we all are pretty set on factoring at this point. So when I factor the numerator, this is a difference of squares. Okay, so that factors the x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so, and if you're having trouble uh, factoring difference of squares, you can go to my college algebra videos and uh, look up a section, I think, 1.5, and it's how to factor. And you'll see how to factor difference of squares in that video. And it shows you how to really factor anything in that video. So if you're having trouble factoring, go into the college algebra playlist on YouTube, and you'll be able to um, watch some videos on how to factor. All right? So we factor, factor the numerator, it's x minus 2x plus 2. In the denominator, we see we have an x minus 2. So what happens? Those two factors cancel. Now, you always have to be careful when you're canceling because, um, you know, you might be canceling a zero term, right? But here's the deal. We're taking the limit as x goes to 2, and I'll explain this in just a second. So for right now, let's just cancel the x minus 2 factor, and when we do that, all we have left is an x plus 2, and I can plug in a 2 for x, and I get 2 plus 2, which the answer is 4. 
So what allows us to cancel these factors here? What property allows us to cancel these and not have to worry? Well, it's the fact that we are taking the limit as x approaches 2. So that means that x gets really close to 2, but it might not be equal exactly to 2. All right, so when we get into the precise definition of a limit, we say it's an open interval um, around 2 in a neighborhood of 2, but with the possible exception of being exactly equal to 2 itself. And if x is not exactly equal to 2 itself, then that means x minus 2 is not equal to 0. How do I know that to be the case? If you think about it, guys, x equal to 2, if I'm minus 2 from both sides, this is x minus 2 equal to 0. So that's, that's where we're getting that from. Okay? So any, when you get a 0 over 0 and you see a limit as x goes to 2, you might be thinking, okay, is there an x minus 2 factor in there that I can cancel? Because if I plug a 2 in, that gets me a 0 in that factor. Okay, that's the idea there. Um, kind of gives you an idea, a way to cheat on knowing what factors might cancel. Let's try another one. Okay, so when we try this problem here, right, we take the limit as x goes to 4. So a limit of x goes to 4, maybe there's an x minus 4 factor, right? That's the question. Okay, so we don't know, but that's the question. So when I plug in 4, always try to plug in, see if it works. I plug in 4 for x, I get 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus 4, and then I have 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8. Now the numerator, when I do the arithmetic there, I'm going to get 0. And the denominator, when I do the arithmetic there, I get 0. So what is this telling me? It's telling me that I was probably right to assume that there was an x minus 4 factor in the numerator and the denominator. So we need to factor the numerator and the denominator. And once again, I encourage you to go to section um, 1.5 in the college algebra notes if you're having trouble factoring trinomials. And so, um, so that's just a, a, you know, summarizing what I just said there. There's that x minus 4 factor going on. And so when you factor the numerator and the denominator, this is what you're going to run into. And you think about how to factor real quick. Um, I want something that multiplies to 4 and adds to a negative 5. Okay, so something that multiplies to 4 and adds to a negative 5. So if I do negative 4 times negative 1, I get, I, that's going to get me 4 but that thing, whenever I add them together, gets me negative five, okay? And that's the negative four is the negative four here, and the negative one is the negative one there, okay? So I go into detail on how to factor in college algebra, and so you can look at those videos if you're having trouble factoring, okay? So now that I see that it has an x minus four in the numerator and the denominator, I can cancel those factors because I'm taking the limit as x goes to four, so it leaves the possible exception that x is not equal to 4, right? So that's possible to have x not equal to 4, which means x minus 4 is not going to be 0, okay? So we don't have to worry about that. And so whenever I cancel, I have x minus 1 over x plus 2. And if I plug in a 4 for my x value, I'm going to get 4 minus 1 over 4 plus 2. And simplifying gets me one half. Okay, so so that works through how to factor and then cancel. So when you get this indeterminate form of zero over zero, you should be thinking about factoring it. And if it's like you know, say you had the limit as x goes to negative three, then you might be looking for an x plus three factor in the numerator and the denominator, right? If you had the limit as x goes to, I don't know, 7, 
then you might be looking for an x minus 7 factor, okay? So, so when you factor here, okay, um, be on the lookout for what you're taking the limit because the limit kind of gives you an idea of what you uh, should be looking for, okay? So, you know, maybe that's, that's a good uh, test question that might pop up or something. Who knows? But uh, anyway... Um, good luck going through uh, these problems.